Hey, my name is James Kelly, and thanks for tuning into this quick demo of the Appster product, new into the Juniper portfolio. I'm really excited to show you just how easy it is to create fabrics and to operate them with Appstra. So first of all, everything that I'm going to show you inside of the Appstra user interface today, you can actually go and drive for yourself. There's a whole sandbox virtual environment that you can bring up. Go to juniper.net slash try, and anybody anywhere in the world can bring these things up. You don't even have to be part of the Juniper staff or our partners. Um, but if you are part of the Juniper staff and partners, you can also bring these things up in Juniper Cloud Labs, if you're aware of that. Now, there's an activity guide for this, so everything that I show you is actually something that you don't need to read a whole ton of documentation to be able to replicate. Just go and follow these instructions, copy and paste things, even to your heart's content. And I think you'll see just how easy the product is to use and how intuitive it is. And in this case, I've got two spines and two leafs in my virtual sandbox uh, environment. One server attached to one leaf and two servers attached to the other leaf. So with that, let's jump back into Appstra. So the first thing that I did before I instantiated this blueprint that you see here is I went into the design menu and I actually created the rack types that match rack one and rack two, the two types of racks that I need, one that has two servers and the other one that has one server. And of course, normally you might have something like, oh, I don't know, say 40 servers or something inside of your uh, data center racks, but even though it makes it very simple to do, I've only got two in my case, so that's just showing you at a glance how easy it is to go and modify templates and reuse and compose things. And from there I created a three-stage, basically a spine leaf fabric for EVPN VXLAN called DC1 template, and you can also see that there's lots of other ones that just pre-exist. I created a few resource pools for autonomous system number allocation, IP allocation, and just use the default pool for VXLAN IDs. Um, that's also really straightforward. You just give them a range, essentially, that you want to automatically allocate from later. And then I onboarded devices into my inventory to be able to map from vendor agnostic devices into vendor specific devices and to very specific serial numbers for my spines and leaves. So you can really go and see the, the wealth of the different kinds of uh, devices that are supported in Appstra. It says over 160 here, and in fact, it's even more than that because we've added a lot more Juniper devices of late in the most recent versions. And I onboarded all of these uh, four Juniper devices, my VQFXs, into the inventory with off-box agents. And then I went into my managed devices and I just simply accepted them into my inventory and took control of them so that they're there, they're ready to be used and allocated um, into blueprints as I go through and map from vendor agnostic to vendor specific and to specific serial numbers in fact. So when I created the blueprint from a template I just selected the template and away you start going um, specifying things that you might want to do and when you come into the dashboard for a blueprint you see dashboard analytics but I'm going to take you to staged first. So staged is where you actually make changes and initially you have to make quite a few changes to allocate things like the ASNs and the loopback IP addresses from those pools that we created. But that's very straightforward. You would just simply hit edit, pick the resource pool that you want, and then hit save. After that's done, um, which really only took a minute, you go and you map from vendor agnostic device types. You can see AOS as a device type, which doesn't exist in reality. It's a vendor agnostic profile. And you map it to a device specific profile in this case, I know that this device is a 7-port, 10-gig spine profile, and I can map it to many different things, but I chose to map it to the Juniper VQFX. So I'll just show you, for example, the profiles of the other virtual device types that you could map it to. And then finally, the last step as you kind of work left to right and resolving red to greens is assigning system IDs into the two spines and your two leafs. And this is just simply picking devices straight out of your inventory saying, okay, well, I know that this serial number or this management IP address maps to spine one, spine two, and so on. And with that, you're really done in terms of your physical provisioning and you move left to right again in terms of uh, just moving on to configuring the overlays, the virtual networks. I had to set up a security zone or also known as a routing zone, I think in newer versions of Appstra that are coming out. But this is a, basically a VRF that can interconnect virtual networks and you need to have it for every kind of virtual network that you set up. I accepted all the defaults for that, so there wasn't very much to do, and I created two virtual networks, mostly accepting all the defaults as well. There's really not a lot to do here. You pick, I picked VXLAN, I gave it a name, I picked the security zone, I said I needed IPv4 connectivity, and I gave it a, a subnet and a, a gateway. And when you're creating a virtual network, you also pick which racks you want to map it to. 
In my case of VN1, I chose to say that I will need uh, to connect servers on uh, both racks into VN1. And this little diagram actually is dynamic as I go and make changes to ports. For example, I know that this server 1 is attached to port 5 on leaf 1 because I mapped it out earlier. But if I wanted to go and change that from an untagged to an unassigned and just completely um, remove the configuration from port 5 effectively and unattach the server to this virtual network, you'll see that I did that and it disappears after just a few moments. And also as I did that, it says, oh, you've got this new uncommitted change. Another great thing about um, Appstra is its beloved rollback feature, just like Juno's, right? It stages all of these changes without making anything um, different on the physical network and on the configuration of the actual devices until you go and commit that and give it a commit message. I can also simply revert all of the changes and just go back to the last stable um, configuration that I just had. And it'll wipe those things all out. Now, I can also go back to any previously committed configuration too. So if you have a known good state at a specific time, you can actually go back and use the Time Voyager feature to just revise your current configuration to the, the known well-stable version. So that's a real quick overview of what I did to create my fabric. Um, I've got a stock dashboard, so to speak, like a coffee cup view, if you want, of your fabric. But you also can highly customize the views that you get with these customized dashboards or configure the auto-enabled dashboards with something like this. Um, probably more than what I can demo for you in just a few quick minutes, the root cause analytics abilities and the anomaly detection inside of Appstra is really terrific. Um, so I'd encourage you to go and explore that maybe in another demo later or check out Cloud uh, Tech Field Day, excuse me, for a lot of the day two demos that Appstra has done. For now, this has been a, a really quick and exciting demo to show you how to build a fabric. I wanted to show you just how easy it is. Hopefully I've done that. And I want to encourage you again to go and try this out for yourself. Anybody can demo this by following those simple instructions. And anybody can access this at juniper.net slash try. Thank you.